Hey guys, welcome back to the Big Matt Fitness Man channel, the real Florida White Boy channel. All right, man, I got a good, I got a good video for you guys today. I just smashed some shoulder workout. I feel good. I got a real good uh, video. Uh, I've, I've, I've told this video to my family, close friends, some coworkers, people that kind of inquire about the chain gang and stuff. It's really crazy. But uh, before I get into the video. I wanted to talk about the channel for a little bit. First and foremost, bam, WD-40. But I put it on the swing, and the swing is still squeaking. I like my swing. I sit back there, get my little peace and quiet. Um, didn't even realize that as, as, I'm, as I'm talking to you guys, the er, er, er. So, yeah, I know that can be annoying, but I appreciate the real subs, you know, telling me how to go about it. And speaking of subs, I want to give a little shout out to Dallas ninety six BB, Carmen, Florida, Bama. You, you you've been you've been subbed since day one. And Josh, man, Josh is a, a good friend of mine for over twenty years. He could vouch for a lot of what I say. But uh, shout out to Josh. Shout out to all the new subs. Shout out to Viking. Uh, Why I'm talking about the channel, uh, real quick, I want to kind of clarify some stuff up. Um, speaking about the subs. Um, and taking their advice, you know, I, I I understand that that when I first made this channel, you know, you know, I, I call out 1090 because I don't like the way he's representing Florida. Okay, this this is where I live, and you know, I I don't like that dude. So yeah, I called him out, but you know, everyone's saying, well, you keep saying the same thing, this and that and that. So I'm just gonna get to my, you know, and that's Pino as well. Um, I'm just gonna get to my. My story, and my story is not going to be on a big platform. It's going to be directly to you guys from video to video, and all you have to do is remember the last story that I told, and when you tune in, just remember some names. And when I when I when I start talking about the next video, I'll, I'll tell you guys. In the last video, remember this name so you guys can catch up with the story, and we'll go from there. Um, but I do want to talk about, you know, the beginning of the channel. I uh, I started watching. You know the prison channel just like anybody else and you know i i didn't like what 1090 was doing to florida you know i i've been in way worse spots that he has and i know that he couldn't be rocking like he was um so yeah i called him out um and, and direct direct result of that um pino if you read my comments you will see the official pino um channel and my comments asking for the fade Okay, and that's how it started with me and Pino, and then he ran, and he didn't want any problems, but I'm just letting you guys know what's really going on. Okay, in one of my videos, the, the official K-Frog, these are not troll comments, these are the real Pino, the real K-Frog. Okay, as far as 1090 goes, he never commented on any of my videos. He did say something about my channel in one of his videos. It's like a, it's one of, this video about, you know, racist or something like this it's got a guy with a tattoo head and somebody had asked me that that's why i'm saying this but to, to, to speed to speed you guys up he did however instagram message viking and asked like what blood i was going to have on my channel this and that and he, he did do that but again i don't have a community so i can't show you guys all this i'm just going to tell you this but i'm going to end it here because at the end of the day he don't want any problems. Pino, coast, Pino saw that I called him out, tried to take the fade. I tried to set it up with him, and he bucked. And then look what happened between these two clowns. They, they, they like sell each other out. They're not even, they're not even cool. So my, it, I'm, I'm taking a different turn, if you, if you guys will. All right. <clears throat> All right, so this video... This video I'm about to tell you is about when I first got the homes. Um, I had a lot of going on in my mind. Um, I was trying to, I first got there, I, I kind of met who's who for the little time I, I, I was there. I, I, the little time that I was on the pound before I went to confinement. And I went to confinement like right away. I had a lot going on at home. I had a lot going on. I was trying to get on a pipe with somebody. 
at a different dorm and I ended up going to chow one night and I'm in line to go in the chow and there's this big sergeant he's known for um, just he's known for disrespecting you and he's known for putting his hands on you um, he, he, he's, he's fucking with me because I got a little bit of hair on my chin. And at the time that I was in, you had, to, you had to have a butt naked face. You had to shave your face before going to chow. And if, if there's a guard that sees a little bit of hair on your face, they would say, hey, go back to the dorm and shave and then come back to the chow hall. It's like a test because they know there's no way that you can run all the way back from the chow hall to your dorm, run back. It, it's going to be closed, okay? So he was fucking with me. You know, he's talking shit. Meat and potatoes is, you know, he's in my face, disrespecting me in front of everybody. I'm brand new on this camp. I, I told him, fuck you, fuck your mama, and fuck everything you love. Worst mistake I could have made. Okay, so uh, I'm going through AC confinement. Immediately he puts the, the, platinum, the platinum bracelets on me, and we're walking through classification, to confinement, but we we go to we stop at in the back of classification. He pushes me against the wall. He picks me up and bams me. He tells me, "Welcome to Holmes. You just royally fucked up." And I'm like, you know, I didn't really care about getting slammed. My, my, I'm, I'm defenseless. I didn't even care about that. But when he said you royally fucked up, I was like, "What's this guy talking about?" Boy, did I boy that I didn't know. He uh, so I go to AC. Do the dead time, I get 30 days. All right. Um, sentence, DC court, 30 days. Disrespecting staff, it's, it's not a major DR. Let me pause for a second. When I first came in, I was medium custody, okay? Um, I was. So I, I get that DR, I'm still medium custody. It's only one DR, it's not that major, it's not that bad of a DR. On my 25th day, the sergeant that was working confinement walks by the dorm, uh, excuse me, the door, and I look at him, and he steps back, and he says, where's your shirt? I'm like, Sarge, it's hot as balls back here. You just got another DR. So now he tacked a 15-day DR onto me right then and there. You're supposed to stay class A at homes in confinement, and it's hot as balls in the summertime. This is when I caught this DR. Everybody does it. But little did I know, the guy that I told, the sold out, that brought me to confinement, he put a hit on me back there. So I catch DR after DR after DR after DR back there. I'm telling you this because, like I told you, I came in medium. Now, when I get out of confinement, three DRs later, my custody is way jacked up. I'm no longer medium custody. I'm in H dorm, which is a crucial dorm. I'm not going to say it's a gladiator camp. I'm not going to say it's a dungeon. It's worse than all that put together. Um, I'm back there with people with life, 25, 15. Oh, shit, 15. Must be lucky. At the time, I had three years. I'm like, okay, I'm not telling anybody I have three years because they're going to either try to get me to back up my time or they're going to try to bodigle me. And, you know, so I, at the time, I just lied about it. Um, so I'm in I'm in this dorm, and when I get back there, it's not an open bay dorm. It's uh, it's a T wing. It's two man cell. I end up getting my bunkie at the time was a uh, X Men, which I'm gonna get to the next video. I'm also gonna speak a lot about confinement in the next video. That's why I kind of rushed through that. But um, seeing like who's in the dorm, and there's a there's a real good dude, T J in that dorm, um, out of Port Charlotte. He had like 10 years when I left, but he showed me a lot to do as far as calisthenics. He was a solid dude. Um, good good person, man. That's who I clicked up with immediately in there. So we're working out one day on the yard, and at Holmes, when the wreck is over, each dorm lines up in a straight line, A dorm, B dorm, C dorm, D dorm, and so on and so on. So I get in line, me and TJ are in line, and there's an old man behind us, and I seen him on the yard when we're working out. He's banging up. He's 70 years old, banging, you know, 10 pull-ups in a row out. 
I'm, I remember thinking, like, damn, look at this old man. And everybody's giving this guy, like, respect. Like, what's up, Mr. Chandler? What's up, Mr. Chandler? You know, salute to you. Respect. I'm like, God damn, I've never seen this before. So we get in line. We go back to the dorm, taking a shower and getting ready for chow. You know, work out, eat. Work out, eat, sleep. Work out, eat, sleep. Okay, so I get, I get in the shower, get out. I go to Mr. Chandler's room, which is the last, which is the last cell on the first tier, next to the TV room, which I was not in. Um, you know, closest to the door, so we can get first in line. You get the picture, okay? So I'm in there, and I'm just kind of the chopping it up with him. I'm like, kind of trying to feel out who he is, because he's got all this respect and shit. As I'm as I'm sitting in there, all these gang members, all these. Everybody keeps, like, going in there. What's going on, Mr. Chandler? Are you having a good day? It's like a 70-year-old man, white guy, with all this respect. His name is Ronald Chandler. Check him out. Florida POC. Um, I'm in this room. I'm waiting on TJ so we can get in line together, walk to the chat hall, eat together. You know how it goes. So I'm in there talking about working out and stuff. And he sees I got an interest in working out. He takes his. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some photos. You know, w- when I was, when I was really big, when I was your age, this and that." So I'm thinking he's gonna grab his photo album, you know, like every everybody else does. So he's fumbling around with his stuff. People are passing in and saying, "What's going on? What's going on?" He ends up coming back with a book, okay, and he flips in the middle of it, and there's there's pictures in that in the middle of the book, and I'm looking at it, and it's when he was in the feds. He's been all over, and I'm looking at these pictures, and sure enough, he's jacked. He's jacked to the. He's jacked out. He, I mean, he's 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 a monstrous. And I'm like, what is this? This book? He's like, oh, this is my autobiography. And I'm like, what? So instantly, like, I'm locked in. I have to know what's going on here. Um. So Mr. Chandler was an original cocaine cowboy in Florida. He got locked up in Miami. Uh, he got plugged in with some Cuban guys. Somebody ended up telling on the whole scheme. Um, he ended up killing the snitch. They gave him a life. He ended up escaping at a Rayford prison in Florida, which is a notorious prison in Florida. He escaped. I got the lowdown on that. I'll get to that in a second. And he basically turned his life around to God. Um, so this book, you guys can Google who I'm talking about, but this book was a, was like a chaplain made book from like one of the local churches up there in Holmes. Um, I'm sure it's gotta be on the internet. Uh, it's the same people that made, I I read there's a book about the band Korn. There was a drummer and he, it, it tells all the crazy stuff about Korn, the band Korn and all these, all this, all their drug days and. All these chicks ended up telling his whole story, and then he turned his life. So that was published. But what I'm getting at is like a, it's a Christian-based book. It's very hard to find. If anybody can find it, please drop the comment. I'd love to have it. So I ask him about the escape, and he tells me back in '82 or '87. Don't quote me. Uh, he escaped through a canteen truck from Rayford, and if you Google his name, I'm pretty sure it says escape there. Uh, his name is Ronald Chandler. Man, uh, it just goes to show you, you never know who you're talking to. But when I tell you everyone showed this man respect, anybody from white, black, Spanish, everybody, because this guy was literally a, a super plug. This guy was, you know, there's these guys selling dope on the street or whatever. They go get locked up like this is like their dream plug so he had like utmost respect became a very good friend of mine unfortunately i didn't stay in that dorm too long i had i caught another dr in that dorm for a knife so imagine my custody now um i had to get one it was a really tough dorm kind of kind of talk about it more in the next video um, but yeah, it's, uh, 
It's a small world. Mr. Chandler, one of, one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. Um, not only talking about his escape and not only taking that book back to my cell and reading about this guy's life and being like, holy shit, this, I'm talking to this guy. I'm re it was crazy, but, you know, he, he kind of, I have had a lot of other conversations with Mr. Chandler, like, he, uh, talking about dying in prison, you know, which is tough. And, uh, I'm not going to get into too much his personal affairs, um, but, you know, I, I've had some really deep conversations with this guy, and, uh, it sucks, man, because I never saw him after I caught this next yard. But, uh, that's it, man. Um, I got, uh, that's it for today. I'm going to drop another video this, this weekend. Somebody just pulled up, kind of messed my whole video up. But um, that's it, man. It's Fitness Man, Big Matt Fitness Man at, at mail.com for any online training. If you guys want to talk to me off, off here, just get at me and uh, stay safe and stay out. What's up, bro?